LEGO is celebrating 50 years of Dungeons & Dragons with this idea set for adults. In the fall of 2022, LEGO hosted a 50 Years of Dungeons & Dragons challenge on LEGO Ideas. There were over 600 submissions in this program with a huge variety of models, and I mean, check out how amazing these designs are. The top 5 designs were narrowed down and we had a whole bunch of things from a manual full of monsters, to a spooky monster chilling in their office, all the way to a working dice tower, and we even had a treasure chest that transforms. The grand prize winner was this Dragon's Keep model. Here we have a medieval scene with a tavern next to a castle-like structure, and on top we have a dragon winding down ready to attack the villagers. This well thought out design has monsters hiding in a cave underneath which totally stays true to the material. Zoom out to the top and we get a sizable landscape of our structures and beachfront. And we get an impressive dragon along with a nice variety of minifigures to match the different class types that you'd see in a real D&D tabletop game. And I'm by no means a Dungeons & Dragons expert, but this is a pretty sweet idea. Let's see what Liberty's LEGO took to transform this idea into a reality. We have so much going on here. LEGO's designers maintain the structure of a village inn alongside a castle-like structure that's split up into three separate sections so you can easily move it around. It seems like a pretty big set in terms of its size, and it's possibly close to the size of the Lion's Knight's Castle or the newly released Medieval Town Square. The blue and purple rooftops of the building on the side look pretty cool, and the overall design matches what you'd see in a typical medieval model. We still get a beachfront with an array of foliage decked out here, even continuing under the bridge. From this other angle, we get a better shot at the castle tower, and I'm not 100% sure, but it looks as though the tower has been damaged from a dragon attack, the way it's broken down at the top. Here's a better look at the bridge and landscape, and it has so much life to it without looking overly cluttered. The outside of the village inn looks alright, there's nothing to really brag about here except for the clever in plain sight signage. Here's a closer look at the rooftop, and I can appreciate the architecture. I think the colors make this pop, and it's got a feeling of taking a typical medieval model brought down to a slightly smaller scale. The bricks that wrap around the corner of the tower are a nice touch along with this curved structure. We also get a 3D dirt formation underneath, with plenty of greenery to break things up, and same with these little green and blue shingles on the side. And I absolutely love the look of the wooden door, I think it looks great here. The other side of the model features our interiors which shows a handful of rooms and it wouldn't be D&D without a dungeon at the bottom of the tower. There's a lot of storytelling going on here and there's something interesting happening no matter where you look. Our dungeon clicks in and has a literal easter egg up on the wall. We also get a hidden potion here and watch your step for whatever the heck this thing is. The tower has a trap door waiting for unsuspecting visitors, and I want to note that we have a key, spider, and another hidden potion which are true to the D&D world. The inn has a tavern inside for our heroes to rest up and celebrate their victories, and just tons of character here. We get a red dragon included which is beautifully designed, the black accents stand out and these wings look phenomenal. A few classic monsters round out the troublemakers here along with a cube and a few skeletons. The included minifigures have excellent designs, and we have tons of classes from D&D. We have a Claire fighter, a wizard, a rogue, and a dragonborn, and we even have an innkeeper. I love the accessories and outfits that are included here, and I think they all look great. Oh, and you also get alternate head styles that are included so you can choose your own look, and that totally fits in with the D&D vibe. Of course, there are tons of easter eggs and small details included, such as the spell scrolls, potions, and other mythical items that you would expect. We have a five-headed statue inside of the tower along with a potion hidden on the side, and it's details like these that really add to the overall model. Comparing this to the original idea, you can tell that the intent was kept intact. LEGO did a great job with adding more depth to the landscape without losing the original designer's vision. And I like the pop of color added to the tavern in the retail version, but I do think that the red roof of the original had a good look going for it. And I think I like the dungeon better in the original with this giant monster waiting underneath. It gives it a feeling of a final boss hiding down in the depths, and I also like these hanging vines on the sides. Now, the minifigures are a toss-up here. I think each cast of characters has a certain charm to them. I do like how LEGO decided to include more than one large monster though, so I suppose I'd take that over only having one down in the dungeon. And the dragon is an interesting one. Both are completely different. I love the colors of the red dragon in the upcoming set, but I also like the design in the original. I think it would've been cool to include this one, but maybe LEGO wanted the dragon to pop 
just a bit more. Where I think LEGO nailed this design the most was the inclusion of the Easter eggs and secrets hidden throughout. That takes things to the next level and adds so much immersion and fun to the build. Now, I'm not a huge fan of D&D myself, and I'm certainly no expert, but I'm a sucker for medieval sets, and this looks like it would be a lot of fun to put together. However, my friends are huge fans of Dungeons & Dragons, so I can see them getting excited for something like this, and it's neat to see a tabletop game come to life in LEGO form. It looks as though this is primed to be a highly interactive model with plenty of room to set up scenes in the meadow, within the set itself, or next to the dungeons, giving lots of post-build creativity. LEGO's designers gave this an overall all polished feel and I can definitely appreciate that. I mean, even the minifigures look awesome. It seems like there was a good amount of thought and care put into this one and I think it's an excellent addition to the catalog. And we have another excellent addition to LEGO's catalog in this video here where we take a look at the medieval town square and see if it can keep up with fan designs. So I will catch you in the next one.